Hello and welcome to this week's TAB Telecast. I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell and I serve as the founding and lead pastor here at the TAB. We hope you find this week's TAB Telecast both informational and inspirational. We also want to invite you to come worship with us some Sunday morning in person here at the TAB. The TAB is located at 1845 West Hubby Avenue in Normal, Illinois. And here is this week's message. This morning, we're beginning a two-month series entitled The Voice of God. Someone said, how do you know it's going to be a two-month series? Well, because I've got two months' worth of material, <laughs> all right? And uh, many people have, have asked me over the years about how to hear the voice of God, and, and, uh, um, and I thought, you know, that's a great question. It's a question I've asked and continue to ask even in my own walk with the Lord, and I thought, well, uh, it probably a, would be a good series of messages. So many, many uh, months have gone into researching and studying the Word of God, and uh, I'm excited about what we're going to be doing, uh, not only through the month of May, but through the month of June as we look at uh, hearing, discerning, and deciphering the voice of God. I want to begin by asking a question today, and that is this. How many of you enjoy watching reality TV? Do you have any reality TV folks here today? You know, reality TV has really taken off here in America over the last couple decades with shows like Survivor, American Idol, America's Got Talent, The Biggest Loser, Keeping Up with Our Kardashians, and Duck Dynasty, just to name a few. One, uh, one reality television show that we like to watch in our household is called The Voice. And The Voice is a reality singing competition broadcast on NBC on Monday and Tuesday nights in both the spring and the fall of the year. The concept of this series is to find, of course, the next great singing voice in America. And this show does this by auditioning new aspiring vocal talents, some good, some not so good, drawn from a series of public auditions across America. The winner is determined by you and me, by viewers, through voting over our telephones, the internet, text messaging, and iTunes purchases. The winner of The Voice receives $100,000 in cash and, of course, a record contract with Universal Music Group. While we may not all have the vocal talent to make it on The Voice, we still have a voice, a voice that is uniquely ours. In fact, there has been and never will be another voice like yours. Just like you have a unique thumbprint, just like you have a unique DNA strand, you have a unique voice. God created each and every one of our voices with unique and special inflections, pitches, tones, and textures so that he and we could identify one another simply by our voice. Have you ever noticed the voice of those who are closest to you is recognizable over the telephone or from another room in the house? When you know someone intimately and closely, you know their voice. You need not see a person in person speaking to you to know it's them. When you know someone intimately and closely, you know their voice. You know the voice because you know it's them because you spent countless hours with them through close personal relationship and interaction, over time discerning and deciphering their unique voice. You know, each and every day, any single one of us hear numerous voices, do we not? I mean, even just this morning, if we were to count how many people we've spoke to, just to get to this time here this morning at 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday. Uh, we've heard numerous voices just today. 
Mothers, I'm told, have the unique ability to discern and decipher the cry of their baby from all the other cries of the babies because they know the cry of their child's voice. This is why a father must ask the mother if that's their child crying. A childhood friend of mine just over the last couple weeks called me on the phone. I hadn't talked to him for probably years. And he simply said, hey, Timmy. That's what my friends used to call me when I was little. I hadn't seen him. I hadn't talked to him for, for years. But I knew his voice. How did I know his voice? Well, because we grew up in the same neighborhood. We spent countless hours and days and weeks and months and years as friends. And he could, of course, discern my voice. Knowing a person's voice comes through spending time with them. Notice you don't know the voice of a stranger. Uh, that, that telemarketer, you know, that keeps calling you. He has to or she has to identify herself or himself, who they are and who they're representing. Why? Because they're strangers to us. We don't know their voice. Over time, we've come to discern people's unique voices. For many of you who've been coming to the tab for the last several weeks, months, and maybe years, I would dare say if I called you up this afternoon and I said, hey, good afternoon, Kevin, good afternoon, Karen, even though, you know, we've got caller ID on our phones today. They would know my voice because they've spent time with me and I've spent time with them as their pastor. Just as you and I can learn to discern and decipher one another's voices from all the other voices in the world, so we as Christians can learn to discern and decipher the voice of God from all other voices in the world. For just like you have a voice, so does God. God has been using his voice since the very beginning of time to create the world and everything in it, speaking and sharing his will and ways with humanity. And what I want to share with you over the next several weeks and the next couple of months is how you and I can come to know for ourselves the voice of God. Because if you read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you will discover a number of things that are congruent and consistent throughout the entire biblical text, one of which is this. God has a voice. And God's been talking to us from the very beginning. In fact, when we even read the end of the book, it's really just the beginning of eternity. The end of time on earth is the beginning of eternity. And I guarantee you, God's going to continue talking throughout all eternity. I will wrap up this series by giving us tools that we can apply and employ and not just hearing but discerning and deciphering God's voice to us among all the other voices in the world this way we'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is speaking to us and not another God desires for us as his children to know his voice so we might grow in our relationship with him as our Heavenly Father God wants us to know his voice so that we will hear and that we will heed his instructions to us in order for us to live the blessed, abundant, triumphant, victorious life in Christ that he wants us to live here and now on the earth. How many of you are interested in learning how to hear the voice of God? How many of you have ever stood at a crossroads in life, a T in the road, and you had a major decision to make? Do you go right or do you go left? And you waited on God. You sought the Lord in regards to his guidance and direction and his wisdom in your life. What were you doing? You were needing to hear 
His voice speak to you uniquely and divinely and sovereignly into your heart and life. It's important for every Christian to be able to discern and to decipher the voice of God for themselves. I want to share with you today about the spoken and written word of God. You know, everything we know about God, think about this, has been taught about God, has come from someone hearing his voice. I think most Christians forget that the written word of God, the Bible, was first the spoken word of God. In fact, those who heard the spoken word of God were the ones that wrote the written word of God. The written word of God was first the spoken word of God. And think about this. We wouldn't have the Bible. None of it. Not one word. If someone hadn't learned to discern and decipher the voice of God. In fact, I'll be so bold to, to get out on a limb and dance on it myself this morning. And say this. Most of the false religions and world religions in our world today are people who heard a voice. But it wasn't the voice of God. It was the voice of the other guy, the devil or his demons. In fact, the Word of God says that in the last days, people will be what? Deceived because they think they're hearing a voice. There's lots of people that hear lots of voices. And it's not just the mentally insane. We're going to talk about them too here during this series. There's lots of voices. We're going to talk about sev the seven voices that we hear next Sunday. So you've got to show up next Sunday, okay? But there's numerous voices. And I believe with all my heart, most of these major world religions outside of the Judeo-Christian faith have heard voices, have thought they were being led, by God or a higher power or divine personality, whatever you want to label them, and, uh, and they were deceived. The Bible says, listen to this, by doctrines of demons. How scary that is to believe you're living the truth and living in the light to come to the end of your life, breathe your last breath, and discover you were deceived. And now... That deception has cost you your eternal soul. Voices. It's important that we learn to discern and to decipher the different voices in our world. And the greatest tool, as we'll see here in this series of messages, the greatest means and medium to hearing the voice of God is this book right here. Because this book was first the spoken word of God and it became the written word of God to you and to me. Why do you think the devil and the demons fight this so hard? Why do you think this is the most uh, persecuted text and book in all human history? Isn't it interesting they're not trying to ban the encyclopedia from our schools? What book can our children not read? The Bible. What, children, what book uh, is not a part of our, our curriculum in our schools? The Bible. Why? Because most of our schools, unfortunately, have been taken over by demons and doctrines of devil. Regardless of whether the Word of God is spoken or written, it's still the Word of God, uttered by the voice of God to us. One medium or means isn't superior or inferior to the other. In fact, they're both co-equally valued and vital because whether God's word is written or spoken, it is still his word to us, his children. For example, when my mother told me when I got home from school to, quote, clean my room before going to practice, Versus her leaving me a note on the kitchen table telling me, clean my room before going to practice. Didn't matter. One means, one medium wasn't more or less important than the other. 
regardless of whether my mother's request was spoken directly to me or whether it was written down on a piece of paper and placed on the kitchen counter. It was nevertheless, please listen to this, a message from my mother communicating her will for my life before I went to practice. And the same is true of God. God's words communicate God's will for our lives. In fact, the word of God is the will of God. How many of you have ever wanted to know God's will? Oh, God, just, just tell me your will. Here it is. You got about eight of them in your house. Just pick one up. In fact, there's two will and testaments that make up the Bible. There's the old will of God, and then there's the new will of God. There's the Old Testament, and then there's the New Testament. Both contain what? God's will for you, for me, for our marriages, for our children, for our families, for our finances. For our future, it contains God's will for our, our, our short lives on earth, and it contains God's will for our lives in eternity. All we have to do is get out the book, because the book contains the will of God. Why? Because the Word of God contains the words of God, and the words of God contain the will of God. When we speak to one another, when we, when we ask certain things of one another, what are we expressing? We're expressing our desires, our wills, our hopes, and our dreams for one another in our relationships. And it's, and it's the same is true with God. It contains God's will for you and for me. So if you want to know the will of God, all you have to do is read the will. Many of you, like me, have lost a parent or maybe even two to death. And any responsible parent before they leave, if they still have their cognition, would sit their children down like my father did with Pete and I in his last days and weeks of his life. And he spoke to us his will. He said, this is what I want you to do. Am I telling the truth, Pete? This is what I want to happen. And he laid it out. And it wasn't a short conversation. Hours expressing his will because he knew his time was coming to an end. And then he did something in addition to speaking his will to us. He wrote it down. Quellum wills, isn't it interesting? Our last will and testament. If you don't have a will, mom and dad, you need to get one. Because someone else will do what they will with your stuff if you don't tell them what to do with their stuff. Can I get an amen? You better have a will. Because you might pass between now and lunch. Tomorrow, the Bible says, is promised to no man. You think you're going to live to see your 80th birthday? Most of us won't. Most people die and pass in their 70s. I know a thing or two about that because I'm a hospice chaplain. If you're in your 70s, if you're in your 80s, you're doing really good. If you're in your 90s, you better praise the Lord and you better have your will read, ready to go. And you better make sure your will is expressed not just in words spoken, but what? Words written. Why? Because I love my children. I love my family. I want them to know what my will is for them. So that whenever I pass, there's going to be no what? No arguments, no hurt feelings. Everybody knows what's going to happen. That's exactly what God did. God didn't just speak to us His will. He wrote it down. He wrote it down, and I've taught you this for years. That's why we, we produce the tab notes each and every, each and every week here because the, the weakest ink is greater 
than the strongest memory. Do you think about this? The last time someone heard the Word of God and wrote down the Word of God in this book lived 2,000 years ago. Now, that doesn't mean God stopped talking 2,000 years ago. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the last time somebody heard from God and it was written down and became canonical in the Word of God, they lived 2,000 years ago. Think about if they didn't write this down. We would never know John 3, 16. We would never know Matthew 22. We would never know Psalm 23. They wrote it down. So thank God for the Word of God. Amen? We need to value this book. We need to read this book every single day. You want to hear the voice of God? I'm going to tell you, and we'll get to it here in a couple weeks. The number one way, in fact, there are 21 ways to hear the voice of God. 21! I spent four hours the other day in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and I just took notes. He showed me through the Word of God 21 ways that He's spoken to humanity over the last 6,000 years. 21 ways. And the number one way is right here in your hand. The number one way is His Word. And I've discovered personally in my own life, every time I read the Word of God, I hear the voice of God. You've heard me say every, every single, not every single Sunday, but, but from time to time in my life, I hear God speak every day. Every day God speaks to me. Now, I might not always discern it, but every day God speaks to me. And there hasn't been a day I haven't picked up this book and God didn't speak to me. I might not always like what he says, but God, come on now. How many of you know you've heard the word of God tell you to forgive somebody and you're like, I don't want to do that. And you pretended to not hear the voice of God and, and you, you, you went into denial mode. But you knew you knew in your heart, that was God. You're right. I need to humble myself. I need to offer forgiveness and grace and extend mercy that, of course, was extended to me from him. The God that we serve spoke in the past, is speaking in the present, and will speak in the future. I want to share with you today and next Sunday in this foundational message two different realms to hearing God's voice, three different tenses to hearing God's voice, and then next Sunday we're going to look at the seven voices that any one of us could hear on any given day. I believe this foundational message this Sunday and next Sunday, in fact this is one message but it's two parts, is probably, I won't say the most important, but it's certainly the foundational ground and stones by which all the other messages in this series will be built if you'll understand what i'm getting ready to share with you today i believe it will aid and assist you in hearing god's voice and discerning his voice among all the other voices in the world it begins first and foremost by understanding that you and i have dual citizenship there are two different realms of reality that you and I are living in every single moment of every single day of our lives. In the beginning, these two realms were one. But because of sin, because of rebellion and transgress transgressions and iniquities on behalf of us as human beings, these two realms that were once coexistent were separated. And then in the end, I'm talking about after the book of Revelation, these two realms again will become one. Why? Because the book ends with the perfect will of God and the book ends with the perfect will of God. And in between the two perfect wills of God, we've got what? We got, God, we got man's will. It was our will that, that blew this whole thing up. Can I get an amen? It was sin that not only separated us from God, it was sin that separated us from the spirit realm. And that's the first realm I want to talk with you today. And I've got my whiteboard. So I'm going to draw up some things here for you and I to see. To give us again a visual. A 
of the two different realms of reality that are happening congruently even right now, right here as we speak. The first realm, and really the most important realm, the realm with the most power, is the spirit realm. I want to share some things with you about the spirit realm. The spirit realm, world, or some people would call dimension, was the first realm created by God. The spirit realm, world, and dimension, as a result of sin, is invisible to us. But just because we can't see it, hear it, touch it, taste it, feel it, doesn't mean it's not there. The spirit realm is there. All right? And it can be accessible to us, watch this now, through five spiritual senses. Each and every one of us have five spiritual senses by which we access the spirit realm. Believe it or not, we can see, touch, taste, feel, and hear things in the spirit realm. And that's where the voice of God is. The voice of God, 99% of the time, will speak to us from the spirit realm. Now, occasionally, people over the last 6,000 years of human history have heard the audible voice of God. And the audible voice of God is what? Is coming from the spirit realm into the second realm, and that is the physical realm. Write that down, all right? So you've got, we've got the spirit realm that we can access through the five senses of our spirit, and we have the physical realm through which we access through our five senses. Now, the Word of God tells us that God is spirit, amen, and that God made us human beings in His image and likeness. And this is hard for us to understand because we believe, and most People who are atheists and agnostics believe this. This is what they believe. Are you ready? Please look at me. They don't believe in this realm. They only believe in this realm. They believe all we are is physical creatures. And once you die, that's it. And if that were so, that would be the truth. If all we were were physical creatures, then after death, that's it. You live. You're born, you live, you die, that's it. But that's not it. That's not the truth. How do we know that? Because the Word of God, the will of God, tells us different. The Word of God tells us we have dual citizenship. We're spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of God, but we're also physical beings made in the image and likeness of God. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. You are a triune being just like God is a triune being. God is spirit. He is a spirit being, but he's also a physical being. That's why when God made us, he made us a spirit being and physical beings. Why? Because we're just like God. And please pay attention, those of you watching me online, to the simile. I'm going to say it real nice and slow. We are just like God. We're not God. You're not God, I'm not God, none of us are gods. That's a false doctrine that's also being taught. We're not gods. We're like God, and we're God's children. My children are not me. My children are like me. They got some features like me. They've got my nose. They got this and they got that. You know, come on now. Your children kind of look like you, but they're not you. You're different. You're separate. But your children, if I could say it this way, are made in your image and likeness. I can look at my grandchildren, Mimi, Mindy, and I, look at Tate and Trace, and we say, oh, I see Hayden. Oh, I see Sydney. Oh, that's something Hayden would do. Oh, that's something Sydney would do. Oh, that, that walks just like Sid. Oh, that, 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 that little grin's just like Hayden. My grandchildren are like their parents. But they're not their parents. 
They're separate and other. And that's how we are. We're made in the image and likeness of God. God's a spirit being. We're spirit beings. And we're what? And we're physical beings. How do we access this physical realm? By our five senses. We access the, the physical realm through touch, through taste, through feel, through hearing, and through seeing. We access everything in this physical world through five physical senses. And watch this now. Please listen. I'm going to drop a really important jewel. You don't access the spirit realm with your five senses in the physical realm. You access the spirit realm using your five spiritual senses. And you have them, watch this now, right now. You have dual citizenship. But most of us have only used our five physical senses. We've never even been taught that we have five spiritual senses. Most of you hearing this message, certainly those of you online, have never even heard you had five spiritual senses. Didn't know. No wonder you haven't heard God, God speak to you because you've been waiting for an audible voice. Speak to your audible ears. Now, can God do that? Absolutely. What's the probability of that? Slim to none. Because if most of you heard the audible voice of God, you'd curl up in a corner and never come out. But I guarantee you, and I, it's a good thing you're sitting down, I'm going to say something shocking to you, but it's the truth. Every single one of you have heard God speak to you from the spirit realm to your spirit. Every single one of you. I would guarantee you, every single one of you this past week, have heard the voice of God speak to your spirit. Now, whether you discerned it or deciphered that that voice was God's, we'll get there. But I guarantee you, you've heard it. You might not have discerned it, but you heard it. Hebrews 11, verse 3 says this. Speaking of this point about the two different realms. By faith, we understand the universe was formed at God's command. In other words, God's voice, listen to this, formed the worlds. He spoke the worlds into existence, amen? So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Where did the physical realm come from? Are you ready for this? Where did the physical realm come from by which we access our five senses? The spirit world, the spirit dimension, the spirit realm. In fact, I will tell you this because I've seen, I've smelled, I've heard, I've tasted, I've felt things in the spirit realm. Everything in the physical realm came from the spirit realm. Now, not everything in the spirit realm is in the physical realm. There are things, the Bible says, the Word says, the will and testament says, no man can conceive, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. In other words, we've never seen heaven on earth. But when you die and you go to heaven, you're going to be like, wow. I've never seen that. But it exists. It just exists in the spirit realm. Amen. How many of you have ever seen streets of gold? Not outside of Hollywood we haven't. And the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> but there's streets of gold in heaven. The Bible says this. And the Bible's true, amen? Colossians 1, verse 16. This, this, it gets even better. In Christ, all things were created, things in heaven, spirit realm, and things on earth, physical realm. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities or all things have been created through him and for him. Are you seeing this thing? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18 says this. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen woo, is eternal. Jesus said it this way, and this really messes with people who have no faith in God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, and what's his word? His will will never pass away. 
Everything I've told you this numerous times, I'm going to say it again just to run it home. Everything you and I can access right now through the five physical senses in this world is going up in smoke. It's all going to be destroyed on the last day. Everything. I mean everything. The Bible says, I think, in Revelation 21, 1, including the sea and everything in it. Now, you want to know something about the sea? What's the sea? The oceans. Two-thirds of our planet, think about this, two-thirds of our planet is covered in water. It's unusable, uninhabitable by human beings. Two-thirds. Mankind only occupies one-third of the mass on planet Earth. Only one-third. And of that one-third, most of it's uninhabitable. Deserts, mountains, you don't, you don't talk about. We live on a very small piece of real estate. But in the end, God's going to destroy this world and everything in it. And watch this now, here's the good news. And recreate it to where man can inhabit the entire earth. I mean, we've got so much real estate to enjoy, we don't even know yet. And God's going to recreate it. How? From the spirit realm. In fact, the Bible says, I'm getting, I'm getting excited here. The Bible says there's coming a day when the new Jerusalem, the capital city of God, will come out of heaven, the spirit realm, and come down to earth, the physical realm. And that's where we're going to live. That's where your mansion is. It's in the new Jerusalem. It's in the capital city of God. Amen. Now, you can have a cabin or two or a house or two outside of the capital city. That's fine. Amen, whatever you want. God will give it to you. He's good. But that, is, that unseen city right now that's in the spirit realm one day is going to what? Is going to come down into the physical realm. And this is what I really get excited about that. And then the next sentence says this. And the tabernacle of God, the dwelling of God, will be with men and men with God. Just like, watch this now, just like it was in Genesis 1 and in Genesis 2. Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, Adam and Eve heard, saw, felt, tasted God's presence. It wasn't until sin that the spirit world and the physical world were separated. How many of you are excited about this? How many of you understand? Okay, now I'm getting it. I understand now that there are two dimensions, there are two realms. In addition to that, there are three tenses of voices. You all know this from your English class. Let's go back to sophomore year in high school, can we? Let's zip line back there. We're not going to stay there very long because some of us will get the shakes. We got some people that love English. This is just for you. We were taught in sophomore English class that there are three different tenses used in communication. By understanding and interpreting the tenses used will help us discern and decipher and understand who's speaking to us. The first tense is this, the first person. Remember the first person? Who's the first person? Well, it's us. The first person is used when we're speaking of or about ourselves. There's first person future. I'm going to give you some examples where you say to yourself, I will go to school tomorrow. I'm going to school tomorrow. That's future tense. That's first tense, personal future. Present tense, I am in school. And past tense, I went to school yesterday. First person, past, present, and future. How many of you, <laughs> how many of you have talked to yourself today? That's what we're talking about. You can talk to yourself, and that's okay. It doesn't make you weird. It just makes you normal. Because believe it or not, all of us do it. You probably got up today and said, you know what? I need some coffee. You know what? I, I, I probably ought to take a shower before I go to church. I certainly better brush my teeth. I mean, you've been talking to yourself all day. It's not even noon yet. 
And we do that, right? I should do this, I should do that. Or we also say this, I probably shouldn't do that. And we do it anyway. Right? We talk to ourselves. And that's okay. As I will show you next Sunday, one of the voices that we hear is our voice. And you better discern your voice versus his voice. Just because you, you hear a voice and that voice could be you, don't think it's God's. In other words, we've done a lot of things under the disguise of our voice, and we put God's stamp on it. God told me to do this. No, it wasn't. It was you. God told me to go up to you and slap you across the face. Oh, really? That might have been your voice, but it wasn't God's voice. Can I get an amen? Are you seeing this thing? So we have to learn to discern our voice when we're speaking in the first person, either past, present, or future. Because guess what? I'll tell you this. This will shock you. The number one voice you'll hear throughout your life is your voice. You'll talk to yourself. I probably should get up and go to the gym today and work out. I probably need to eat more fruits and vegetables. I should do, that's you. And that's okay. Because sometimes we need to have a good self-talk. Amen. I probably should pray today. I probably should go to church on Sunday. I probably need to read the word of God this week. That's all your voice telling you what you need to do. So you need to discern your voice and occasionally listen to it. If it's for your betterment, can we get an amen? Tense number two is, of course, the second person. The second person is used when speaking to another. When we talk to one another, we talk what? Not in the first person, we talk in the second person. Second person future, you should go to school tomorrow. Second person present, you should go to school today. Second person past, you know, you really should have gone to school yesterday. One of the voices we hear every single day, as I said at the beginning of this message, is each other's voices. So there's our voice that we talk to ourselves, and then there's other people that are speaking to us, or we speak to them. Come on now, moms and dads. Most parents, what do you do spending the most day? Talking to your kids, telling them what they need to do. Clean up your room. Brush your hair. Take a shower. Don't forget to use soap. Don't just get wet. Pick up your room. Amen? So the second person is very, very, very important. I will show you next Sunday. We're going to depth with this. But the second person isn't just for other human beings to speak to each other. God speaks in the second person. Angels speak in the second person. The devil speaks in the, in the second person. And demons speak in the second person. You have five different entities that use the second person pronouns to talk to you. How many of you know that's kind of hard to discern and decipher? It could be mom and dad's voice. It could be my friend's voice. It could be my boss's voice. It could be God's voice. It could be an angel's voice. It could be a demon's voice. It could be the devil's voice. How do I discern all these voices that I'm hearing speak to me using second person plural pronouns? I'm not going to answer that today. You've got to keep coming back for this series. I'm going to teach you. There's a way to discern and to decipher the voices. The third person. Third person is the third tense, of course, that we can hear and we do use. It's when speaking about another person. When we're speaking about another person, we use what? Third person tense. Third person future, Terry should go to school tomorrow. Third person present, Terry should go to school today. 
third person passed, Terry should have gone to school yesterday. The third person tense is also used with us, not when we're talking to one another, watch this now, but when we're talking about another. Are you with me? Are you seeing this? It's important we discern the three tenses because they're clues as to who is talking to us. Can I tell you what most demons, and I've cast out a lot of devils out of a lot of people. Most demon-possessed people hear third-person voices. They, them, us, and we. Isn't it interesting today in our culture there is a war over pronouns. You have to identify me by this pronoun. Doesn't mean matter what the gender is that I was born with, I'm going to identify by this pronoun. What is that? I can tell you what that is. It's a devil. It's a demon. I can prove it to you through the word of God, and I will. Whenever there's plural pronouns being used, that is a flashing red sign to people like me. You're dealing with a devil. You're dealing with at least one demon, if not two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Because they talk in plural pronouns. Why? Because there's multiple personalities within that person. And they're having a conversation amongst themselves. And then they start talking in plural pronouns to people like Jesus and Peter and Paul and John and people like me who are trying to set people free from multiple demons. This is important. These are important truths. I know I'm talking in deep stuff here today. I'm trying to take it as slow and nice and easy. But it's important for us to hear and to learn and to know and to be educated and enlightened about the two different realms and the three different tenses that voices can be heard from either the spirit realm or the physical realm. This all begins, if you want to hear the voice of God, if you want to walk in daily relationship with Him, it begins by welcoming him into your heart and life to open the door of your heart and to surrender your will to his will and ask him to come watch this now and save you from your sins and why is that so important to hearing the voice of God are you ready for this because your sins and my sins separate us from God Go back to Genesis 3. What did Adam and Eve's sin do? It separated them, listen to this, not only from the presence of God, which is the most important thing, it separated them from the voice of God, and it separated the spirit and the physical realms. That's how serious sin is. That's, that is why God sent his one and only son into the world to save us from our sins. Because God knew what the number one problem was with humanity, sin. And what did Jesus come to do? He came to do a great many things, amen? He did. But the number one thing Jesus came from, the spirit realm into the physical realm to do, was to save you and I from our sins. Because when we're saved from our sins, it's only then that we can be reconciled back to God. It's only then that we can begin hearing his voice and discerning his will and getting guidance and direction for our lives. There's a reason sinners don't hear the voice of God. They can't. Their sin is blocking His voice. Now, they might feel His conviction, but they don't hear His voice. Voice comes through relationship. So today, as I close, with every head bowed and eye closed, if you're here today or you're watching me online, 
And you say, Pastor Tim, I'm separated from God. I don't hear God's voice. I don't feel His touch. I don't sense His love and kindness and compassion in my heart. If that's you here today, I've got good news for you. God sent His Son, Jesus, some 2,000 years ago to save you from your sins, to redeem you, to restore you, and to reconcile you back into a right relationship with Him. And if you would, Pray this prayer, not to me, not to anyone else, but to God. He will come into your heart and life. He will save you from your sins, and he will restore not just his presence, but his voice in your heart and in your life. If you're here today and you want to be saved from your sins, pray this prayer. Dear God, I come before you this morning, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life and be my Lord and Savior. And help me live for you all the days of my life. And help me listen to you and your voice all the days of my life. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and amen and amen. Would you put your hands together today for the word?